When I was the manager of radioactive material licensing for the state of Texas, one of the subjects I studied was radioactive gemstones. What some people may not be aware is certain colored gemstones are irradiated with either electron beams or in a nuclear reactor in order to change their color. And then they're usually heat treated in order to finish the color to get it right. And that's not saying all colored gemstones, it's just there's certain ones. And one of the ones that's radiated most often is blue topaz. And blue topaz can be naturally irradiated. They sometimes occur with a, or say near some uranium, where they'll become irradiated, and that turns them blue. Those are fairly rare. Um, most blue topaz is irradiated in a nuclear reactor, and then some is irradiated with electron beams. The ones rated with electron beams are not radioactive. So what I'm discussing is the nuclear reactor rated radioactive blue topaz and their problems. And so it's a very simple process. They'll take a bag of stones, introduce it into a nuclear reactor through some port, and just let them sit inside for six months or a year, however long it takes for that given reactor. And then they'll pull it out and they let it decay for two or three years, generally, until it decays to a safe level. And then the stones are taken out and they're sold to distributors and put into pieces of jewelry. And, but they're still mildly radioactive. So there are problems with that. And number one, A, being they're radioactive. Um, number two is they're often imported without a license. Now, in the, in the U.S. and in Europe and most of the more developed countries, there are requirements for you have to have an importation license to bring radioactive gemstones into the country. And they must be tested to make sure they're safe before they're distributed to other people. So, we have this requirement. The problem is, is that it's often not met. In the U.S., we had a case where after 2009, NRC memo came out saying, yes, you must have an importation license. Someone in my state decided, wait, great, this is a new business. I'll be the importer of record. I'll do the test to make sure the gemstone's safe and I'll send it back to my customer and they can sell it to their customers. So, okay, great idea, great business idea. They got zero customers. And that's because all the people that sold the blue topaz and other gemstones are used to importing them illegally without going through a license process. And so they weren't going to start importing them legally because they weren't getting caught. And that means there's no verification that these gemstones were allowed to sit for the right amount of time. Now, in most cases, they're probably allowed to decay the way they should. Most people are going to do the right thing. But there are people out there that don't do the right thing. They want to turn over their money. I mean, they've spent money to buy the gemstones. And like in the case of topaz, they start out clear or even a little brownish, typically, and then they irradiate them to make the dark London blue and American blue. The lighter colors of sky blue could either be nuclear irradiated or they could be electron beam irradiated, but you can't just tell by the color. So people want to get their money back. They've spent money, they want to get their money back. They, they don't want to have their inventory sitting for years, so they might jump the gun. And that's why we want it, that's why we have importation license and verification system that's a system that's broken. And then I found there's a problem with Iron 55. I read that NRC has a new reg, which is a booklet they, they make on different topics on radiation safety. And New Reg 5883, which covers blue topaz, did an in-depth analysis on all the 
radiation that comes from blue topaz and how long it needs to decay before it becomes safe. Except when you read through the list, you read along and you get manganese 54, iron 59. Where's iron 55? If you have manganese 54 and iron 59, there's iron 55 there. And they just missed it. Now, the reason they probably missed it is iron 55 decays by electron capture decay. It captures one of its own outer shell electrons or inner shell electrons. And then it um, decays. And what it emits is an x-ray, a manganese x-ray in particular, which is at about 5.9 keV, kilo electron volts, which if you know anything about the energy spectrum of x-rays is very low energy. It's much below the energy used when you get an x-ray in a doctor's office because it doesn't penetrate very deep, deep into tissue, less than a millimeter. So you have to have a thin window detector, something that's optically thin, like beryllium window detectors, in order to see it. If you have a detector with a thicker window, like aluminum or steel, you won't see this 5.9 keV x-ray. So people just doing analysis with whatever type of detector they have, they won't see it unless they have one that has a thin window that's designed to identify low energy x-rays. So the problem with that is that iron 55 has a 2.7 year half-life. It just doesn't go away in two to three years like most of the other isotopes of concern in blue topaz, which means it could be radioactive for five or ten years above the regulatory limits. Now regulatory limits in some countries like the US are based on the dose. How much radiation dose do you get from an object in, and it needs to be low enough to be safe. In some areas like the EU it's based on the amount of activity per gram or kilogram how many becquerels of radiation you get. But in both cases, if you don't count the isotope with the highest activity, then you're missing both. Although the dose rate, because it's so low, it's only affecting your skin dose. It doesn't affect your whole body dose because it doesn't penetrate into your internal organs. So it's still fairly safe. You basically get a minor increase in your risk of skin cancer when you wear it, but it's a really, really small increase. If you have a piece of blue topaz, don't throw it out just because of that. And, and if, if, if you've had it for five or ten years, then it's going to be safe to wear because even with 2.7 year half-life, usually after five or ten years, it's decayed to the point that, that it really is safe. But it's a regulatory problem. It's a regulatory mistake that these gemstones are being distributed and they're actually not meeting the regulations. In addition to people aren't even trying to meet the regulations. Now another problem is you have uncut stones. The stones are supposed to be cut before they're radioactive, not after. And the reason is if you have a lapidary wheel and you're cutting a stone, your lapidary wheel becomes conta contaminated with radioactive material. And then if you get it on your hands and eat a sandwich, you might ingest it, or if your fan blows it into the air when it dries, you might inhale it, and that's not good. You don't want to get radioactive material inside your body. It's one thing to wear a piece of jewelry, it's another thing to grind up a radioactive piece of jewelry and, and inhale it or eat it. You, you don't want to do that. So I've seen uncut blue topaz for sale when I was doing this research around 10 years ago. And so they shouldn't be for sale. And there are lapidaries that I suspect have been doing custom cut blue topaz jewelry for a special line that I think are cutting radioactive stones. Either stones that were originally cut, uncut 
or that they were cut and they're recutting them to fit their jewelry. So that's a problem. You shouldn't be doing that. And if you're watching this and you're a lapidary who works with blue topaz, I suggest you both contact your equivalent of the USNRC or your state agency responsible for regulating radioactive material and also contact a health physicist uh, consultant and you may contact the consultant first so he can help you with dealing with the agency and have the consultant evaluate your safety and your risk and perhaps you might be able to get a license to do it if you take proper safety precautions but that might mean you doing the lapidary wheel inside, an, inside a fume hood, wearing gloves, those types of protections. That's what you really should be doing if you're lapping radioactive stones. And of course, the ultimate problems are people wearing radioactive stones and people are getting radi radioactive dose, so there's a small increase in risk of cancer, particularly skin cancer. Now I want to emphasize it's a very small risk. So don't throw your jewelry away. It's, it's not going to be a risk. Would I wear it every day? No. I wouldn't wear a radioactive piece of jewelry every day. But I wouldn't throw it in the trash either. And, but the other part of my being on this soapbox is people should be aware if they're buying radioactive gemstones. The dealers and distributors should not be able to just sell it to you and not tell you. Of course they don't want to tell you because they're afraid if they tell you that you won't buy it and they don't want to lose their business. So they'll lie or just not tell you and so that you don't know. But in my mind every piece of radioactive gemstone, whether it be blue topaz, diamonds, or whatever, for pieces that actually are radioactive should come with a certificate saying that that this was treated with with radiation and is mildly radioactive and it's been tested so it's safe and we know it's safe for you to wear and I'd like to see that happen now on the other hand I know that the way things are imported in around the world the way things are shipped in packages everywhere that's hard to do, especially when you have sellers who they don't want to tell you, they don't want to pay for the testing either. So there's always going to be a struggle of people trying to sell you something that's radioactive without telling you. And I don't have an answer to fix it. But it's important that people know, in particular if you're buying blue topaz, there's a chance, a good chance, that it's radioactive, mildly. And you should be aware of that. You should be able to make your own decision about whether you want to wear, wear that piece of jewelry. Well, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you did, please share it with your friends, whether it's your science nerd friends or your jewelry loving friend, so that they know about it. And please subscribe. I'm going to do more videos on radioactive gemstones because this, is, this isn't the only part of the story and, and I want to talk about diamonds, green diamonds in particular. And so please subscribe so you can follow my future videos and my physics videos. And thanks for watching.